Women have served in the military in various roles and in various jurisdictions throughout history. Since 1914, in Western militaries, women have served in greater numbers and more diverse roles than before. In the 1970s, most Western armies began allowing women to serve in active duty in all military branches. In nine countries women are conscripted into military service. Only a few countries allow women to serve on an equal basis. They include Australia, Canada, Germany, Norway, Sweden and Denmark. History World War I During the First World War, the United States was in total warfare efforts. Every person had to help in contributing to the war. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that everyone needed to fight. The country needed to continue to fund their troops and support the war financially while soldiers were fighting. The United States relied on organizations to support the war efforts. Women joined organizations such as the Committee on Public Information in order to educate people about the war. This committee additionally promoted nationality. In addition to working for committees having to do with education, women worked in all sorts of positions. Many women became YWCA members and bravely went overseas to help soldiers. This was the first time in history that women of all classes were working together to help the war efforts. Upper class women founded many voluntary war organizations while middle and lower class women worked in these organizations by working as nurses or by filling in the jobs of men. Although all women were working to help their country, many women of color faced prejudice during this time. Due to the war effort, many African American families moved from rural farms to urban cities. African American women were given the most hard working jobs with the lowest pay. Many organizations were formed, such as the Colored YWCA, to support African American women. These organizations helped these women find safe homes and stable jobs. They also hired many social workers to make it certain that employers treated women of color equally. Towards the end of World War I, black women were legally allowed to travel overseas to help the Red Cross. Many women from the Association of Colored Graduate Nurses were the first African Americans to help the Red Cross. Russia The only nation to deploy female combat troops in substantial numbers was Russia. From the onset, female recruits either joined the military in disguise or were tacitly accepted by their units. The most prominent were a contingent of frontline light cavalry in a Cossack regiment commanded by a female colonel, Alexandra Kudasheva. Others included Maria Bochkareva, who was decorated three times and promoted to senior NCO rank, while the New York Times reported that a group of 12 schoolgirls from Moscow had enlisted together disguised as young men. In 1917, the provisional government raised a number of women's battalions, with Bochkareva given an officer's commission in command. They fought well, but failed to provide the propaganda value expected of them and were disbanded before the end of the year. In the later Russian Civil War, they fought both for the Bolsheviks infantry and the White Guard. Others In Serbia, a few individual women played key military roles. Scottish doctor Elsie Ingalls coordinated a retreat of approximately 8,000 Serbian troops through Romania and revolutionary Russia, up to Scandinavia and finally onto transport ships back to England. Another woman, Milunka Savic, enlisted in the Serbian army in place of her brother. She fought throughout the war, becoming possibly the most decorated woman in military history. In 1917, Loretta Walsh became the first woman to enlist as a woman. A 1948 law made women a permanent part of the military services. In 1976, the first group of women were admitted into a U.S. military academy. Approximately 16% of the 2013 West Point class consisted of women. In the 1918 Finnish Civil War, more than 2,000 women fought in the Women's Red Guards. In the Spanish Civil War, thousands of women fought in mixed gender combat and rearguard units, or as part of militias. In 1990 and 1991, some 40,000 American military women were deployed during the Gulf War operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, however, no women served in combat. 
A policy enacted in 1994 prohibited women from assignment to ground combat units below the brigade level. World War II All the major participating nations in World War II enlisted women. The majority served as nursing and clerical or support roles. Over 500,000 women had combat roles in anti-aircraft units in Britain and Germany, as well as frontline units in the Soviet Union. <laughs> United Kingdom In 1938, the British took the lead in establishing uniformed services for women small units of nurses had long been in service. In late 1941, Britain began conscripting women, sending most into factories and some into the military, especially the Auxiliary Territorial Service ATS attached to the army. The ATS began as a women's auxiliary in 1938. In 1941, the ATS was granted military status, although women received only two-thirds of male pay. Women had a well-publicized role in handling anti-aircraft guns against German planes and V-1 missiles. The daughter of Prime Minister Winston Churchill was there, and he gushed that any general who saved him 40,000 fighting men had gained the equivalent of a victory. By August 1941, women were operating fire control instruments, although they were never allowed to pull the trigger, since killing the enemy was considered to be too masculine. By 1943, 56,000 women were in anti-aircraft command, mostly in units close to London where they faced a risk of death, but not of capture. The first death of a woman in anti-aircraft command occurred in April 1942. Germany The Third Reich had similar roles for women. The SS Helferinnen were regarded as part of the SS if they had undergone training at a Reichsschule SS. All other female workers were contracted to the SS and chosen largely from concentration camps. Women served in auxiliary units in the Navy Kriegshelferinnen, Air Force Luftnachrichtenhelferinnen and Army in 1944–45 roughly 500,000 women were volunteer uniformed auxiliaries in the German Armed Forces Bundeswehr. About the same number served in civil aerial defense, 400,000 volunteered as nurses and many more replaced drafted men in the wartime economy. In the Luftwaffe they served in combat roles helping to operate anti-aircraft systems to shoot down Allied bombers. By 1945, German women held 85% of the billets as clerics, accountants, interpreters, laboratory workers and administrative workers, together with half of the clerical and junior administrative posts in high-level field headquarters. The German nursing service consisted of four main organizations, one for Catholics, one for Protestants, the secular DRK Red Cross and the Brown Nurses for committed Nazi women. Military nursing was primarily handled by the DRK, which came under partial Nazi control. Frontline medical services were provided by male medics and doctors. Red Cross nurses served widely within the military medical services, staffing the hospitals close to the front lines and at risk of attack. Two dozen were awarded the Iron Cross for heroism under fire. Brown nurses were forced to look away while their incapacitated patients were murdered by war criminals. Hundreds of women auxiliaries served in the SS in the camps, the majority of which were at Ravensbrück. In Germany, women worked and were told by Hitler to produce more pure Aryan children to fight in future wars. Japanese American women During the Second World War, many Japanese American women lost their jobs or pay because they were sent to relocation camps. Japanese immigrants and Japanese Americans were faced with discrimination. Many Americans called it the Yellow Peril and called Japanese people Japs. In 1913, California passed the Alien Land Law, which prohibited aliens ineligible for citizenship from owning land to grow crops on. Despite the discrimination, many Japanese American women volunteered to serve in the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps. Sexism, along with racism, was something that these women faced when they joined WAAC. Even while dealing with discrimination, Japanese American women were able to greatly help the United States. Many women were hired as interpreters, translators, and interrogators in the military intelligence service. In 1948, the Women's Army Corps was permanently established and remained until 1978 when women were allowed into the army.
Topic: <laughs> Yugoslav Partisans. The Yugoslav National Liberation Movement had 6 million civilian supporters. Its 2 million women formed the Anti-Fascist Front of Women (AFS), in which the revolutionary coexisted with the traditional. The AFS managed schools, hospitals and local governments. About 100,000 women served with 600,000 men in Tito's Yugoslav National Liberation Army. It stressed its dedication to women's rights and gender equality and used the imagery of folklore heroines to attract and legitimize the fighters. After the war, although women were relegated to traditional gender roles, Yugoslavia's historians emphasized women's roles in the resistance. After Yugoslavia broke up in the 1990s, women's contributions to the resistance were forgotten. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Vietnam War. Though relatively little official data exists about female Vietnam War veterans, the Vietnam Women's Memorial Foundation estimates that approximately 11,000 military women were stationed in Vietnam during the conflict. Nearly all of them were volunteers, and 90% served as military nurses, though women also worked as physicians, air traffic controllers, intelligence officers, clerks and other positions in the U.S. Women's Army Corps, U.S. Navy, Air Force and Marines and the Army Medical Specialist Corps. In addition to women in the armed forces, an unknown number of civilian women served in Vietnam on behalf of the Red Cross, United Service Organizations USO, Catholic Relief Services and other humanitarian organizations, or as foreign correspondents for various news organizations. In addition to the U.S. military women who served in Vietnam, an unknown number of female civilians willingly gave their services on Vietnamese soil during the conflict. Many of them worked on behalf of the American Red Cross, Army Special Services, United Service Organizations USO, Peace Corps, and various religious groups such as Catholic Relief Services. Other American women traveled to Vietnam as foreign correspondents for news organizations, including Georgette Dickey Chappelle, a writer for the National Observer who was killed by a mine while on patrol with U.S. Marines outside Chu Lai in November 1965. According to the Vietnam Women's Memorial Foundation, 59 female civilians died during the conflict. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Democratic Republic of the Congo began training an initial 150 women as para commandos for the Armée Nationale Congolaise in 1967. Many more were trained subsequently, over a period of years. The women received parachute and weapons training, although it is unclear to what extent they were actually integrated into the combat units of the Congo. <inaudible> <inaudible> Eritrea In 1999, the BBC reported that about a quarter of the Eritrean soldiers in the Eritrean-Ethiopian War were women. Israel Israel is the only country with conscription for women. Mandatory conscription for single and married women without children began in 1948. Initially, women conscripts served in the Women's Army Corps, serving as clerks, drivers, welfare workers, nurses, radio operators, flight controllers, ordnance personnel, and instructors. Roles for women beyond technical and secretarial support began opening up in the late 1970s and early 1980s. In 2000, the Equality Amendment to the Military Service Law granted equal opportunities in the military to women found physically and personally suitable for a job. Women started to enter combat support and light combat roles in a few areas, including the artillery corps, infantry units, and armored divisions. A few platoons named Caracal were formed for men and women to serve together in light infantry. Many women joined the border police. Despite these changes, fewer than 4% of women service members are in combat positions such as infantry, crew of tanks or other armored vehicles, artillery guns service, fighter pilots, etc. Rather, they are concentrated in combat support. Topic 2017. 
The proportion of female military personnel varies internationally, for example, it is approximately 3% in India, 10% in the UK, 15% in France, 13% in Sweden, 16% in the US, 15.3% in Canada, and 27% in South Africa. While a marginal percentage of women are reported in military service globally, estimates following the increasing trend of military women capped predictions at about 10% for 1980. As expressed by the current percentages, these numbers have not risen much past that, with the exception of South Africa. Many state armed forces that recruit women continue to bar them from ground close combat roles, roles that would require them to kill at close quarters. This practice preserves male domination within militaries. In limiting female entry, militaries have maintained their characteristic brutal masculinity. Compared with male personnel and female civilians, female personnel face substantially higher risks of sexual harassment and sexual violence, according to British, Canadian and U.S. research. Not only have women been left unprotected, but the major cause of PTSD experienced by women is identified as military sexual trauma MST. The male experience of PTSD derives from that of combat trauma. Combat Some nations allow female soldiers to serve in certain combat arms positions. Others exclude them for various reasons including physical demands and privacy policies. Among the NATO nations, and as of the mid-1970s, women were able to attain military status in the following countries, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, the Federal Republic of Germany, Greece, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Non-conscription countries, notably the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada are where the highest levels of female military presences were achieved. Canada is marked as particularly progressive in its early implementation of gender equality practices. A rise in the call for equal opportunity coupled with the decline of able-bodied men willing to enter military service coaxed countries to reform policies toward female inclusion. With the opening of submarine service in 2000, women now had free reign to enlist in any kind of military service. Despite their gender-neutral approach, a lack of female retention programs have kept female military participation to about 15.3%. == United States The United States military opens all positions to women. Units such as special forces require members to meet extraordinary requirements, and no females have met them in some units. History Women have been involved in the U.S. military since 1775, originally in the civilian fields of nursing, laundering, mending clothing and cooking. Deborah Sampson was one of the first women to enlist while disguised as a man. She was unhappy with her limited role in the American Revolution. She served in a light infantry unit, fighting in many battles. Injuries put her in a hospital where her secret was discovered. Her commanding officer, General John Patterson, honorably discharged her and thanked her for her service. Many women contributed to the Civil War, whether it was through nursing, spying or physically fighting on the battlefield. An example of this is seen through Belle Royd. She began her career as a spy and messenger at the young age of 17. By the time she had become 20, she became quite famous in the United States in which people called her the Cleopatra of the Confederacy. As a spy, she provided Confederate leaders with valuable information. She was arrested multiple times and put into prison. Eventually, she was banished from federal soil and was told she would receive a death sentence if she were caught on federal soil again. Those who fought in the war, disguised themselves as males, and went by men's aliases. It wasn't extremely difficult for women to conceal their true identities because soldiers showered separately and were fully clothed the majority of the time. In addition, both men and women would join the army with no previous military experience, so their training was very similar and the women would not stand out. The most common way for women to be discovered was through injury, for instance, in 1861, Mary Owens enlisted into the Union Army disguised as the brother of William Evans, of whom was actually the love of her life. They could not stand to be separated. Her job was to deliver handwritten messages to commanders on the battlefield so that she would avoid combat. 
After her lover was killed in battle, Mary decided to avenge his death by fighting in the battlefield. She received a massive gash on her forehead in which she was sent to the hospital for treatment. It was during this moment that her female identity was revealed and she was discharged from the military. Those who were discovered, would either be sent home or faced with punishment. However, Mary was warmly welcomed back into her town. Other disguised were often uncovered by chance. Sarah Collins was a strong woman who believed she could do the job of a male soldier. Her brother, who was also a soldier, assisted her in disguising as a man by cutting her hair short and dressing her up in men's apparel. Unfortunately, her disguise was not perfect as her true identity was uncovered in the way she properly placed her shoes that was unlike a male's method of placing shoes. Sarah was then sent home while her brother remained fighting. It is difficult for historians to accurately estimate the true number of women who fought in the war because of their disguise and aliases, as well as their desire of discretion. Women joined the fray of the Civil War for similar reasons as men, the promise of a steady wage, innate sense of patriotism, or for the thrill of an adventure. Some women would even follow their loved ones into battle. In 1917 Loretta Walsh became the first woman to enlist as a woman. A 1948 law made women a permanent part of the military services. In 1976, the first group of women were admitted into a U.S. military academy. Approximately 16% of the 2013 West Point class consisted of women. In 1990 and 1991, some 40,000 American military women were deployed during the Gulf War operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, however, no women served in combat. A policy enacted in 1994 prohibited women from assignment to ground combat units below the brigade level. Policy changes Until 1993, 67% of the positions in the Army were open to women. In 2013, 15.6% of the Army's 1.1 million soldiers, including National Guard and Reserve, were female, serving in 95% of occupations. As of 2017 78% of the positions in the Army are open to women. In the U.S. Air Force, 99% of career fields are open to women, with the only exceptions Special Tactics Officer, Combat Control, Special Operations Weather Technician, Combat Rescue Officer, Pararescue, and Tactical Air Control Party. In January 2013, the U.S. ended the policy of no women in units that are tasked with direct combat. In 2013 female U.S. Army soldiers enrolled in a training course designed by Combined Joint Task Force Paladin, specifically designed for female engagement team members. The course was intended to train female soldiers for tasks such as unexploded ordnance awareness, biometrics, forensics, evidence collection, tactical questioning, vehicle and personnel searches, and homemade explosive devices. By May 2015, none of the 19 women vying to become the first female Army Rangers had passed Ranger School, 11 of the 19 dropped out in the first four days. Of the remaining eight who failed in the next step, three were given the option to. Two graduated in August 2015. A third graduated in October 2015. In April 2015, after two and a half year period in which the Marine Corps Infantry Officer course became gender integrated for research, ended without a single female graduate. The final two participants failed the initial combat endurance test. In 2016, all combat jobs opened to women. Women have been injured, killed, and awarded high honors. Two women received the Silver Star, SGT. Lee Ann Hester in 2005 and Army Specialist Monica Lynn Brown in 2007 for their actions in combat. Over 10,000 combat action badges were awarded to women who served in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. <laughs> Physical, social, and cultural issues A 2015 Marine Corps study found that women in a unit created to assess female combat performance were significantly injured twice as often as men, less accurate with infantry weapons and not as good at removing wounded troops from the battlefield. The study assessed a nine-month experiment at Camp Lejeune, N.C., and 29 Palms, Calif. About 400 Marines, including 100 women, volunteered to participate. Male squads, teams, and crews demonstrated better performance on 93 of 134 tasks evaluated than units with women in them. 
Male units were faster while completing tactical movements in combat situations, especially in units with large, crew-served weapons such as heavy machine guns and mortars. Male infantry squads had better accuracy than squads with women in them, with a notable difference between genders for every individual weapon system used by infantry riflemen units. The M4 carbine, M27 infantry automatic rifle and M203 single-shot grenade launcher were assessed. Male Marines who had not received infantry training were more accurate than women who had. In removing wounded troops from the battlefield, notable differences in execution times were found between all male and gender integrated groups. Unit cohesion was lower in mixed gender units. Many female soldiers reported that the way that they are viewed by male soldiers is often detrimental to their participation. For instance, female soldiers are often labeled as either standoffish or a slut. In order to avoid such labels, female soldiers have to spend time with fellow soldiers strategically, without spending too much time with any one of them. This approach often has an isolating effect. In several instances, women were considered less skilled than male soldiers, so were not given opportunities to complete tasks for which they were qualified, according to Lieutenant Call. Dave Grossman, author of On Killing, The Psychological Cost of Learning to Kill in War and Society, Israeli soldiers reacted with uncontrollable protectiveness and aggression after seeing a woman wounded. Further, Islamic militants rarely, if ever, surrender to female soldiers, lessening the IDF's ability to take prisoners. Iraqi and Afghan civilians are often not intimidated by female soldiers. However, in socially conservative environments, female combat soldiers can search female civilians, while children and women are more likely to talk to female soldiers than to male soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Sexual harassment and assault one 2009 report concluded that military women were three times more likely to be raped than civilians, and that women soldiers in Iraq were more likely to be attacked by another soldier than by an insurgent. In 1988, the first military-wide sexual harassment survey found that 64% of military women had been subjected to some form of sexual harassment. The most affected were Native Americans, followed by Hispanics and African Americans. Topic. Sexual assault, what it is and the process Sexual assault is more likely to occur in the military than in the civilian population. One in four active duty female military personnel will be sexually assaulted. The military has a code of justice which defines sexual assault, rape, aggravated assault, abusive sexual assault, nonconsensual sodomy forced oral or anal sex, or attempts to commit these acts. All of these acts are punishable by military law which begins by the victim going forward to their commander. It is then their job to make an inquiry on the perpetrator, however they also have the right to dismiss the claims. They can also the right to take non-judicial punishment or take it to high authority. If the perpetrator's punishment can go from dismissal, to dishonorable discharge to confinement in military prison. If found with the crime of rape the perpetrator can carry a lifetime of imprisonment to in extreme cases even execution. When women went to report their sexual assault 83% of the victims stated that their experiences with military legal personnel made them reluctant to seek further help. Many victims in the military describe the response to and aftermath of sexual assault as more painful than the assault itself because of the unspoken code of silence. The code of silence implicates that women should keep quiet about their assault and not come forward to take action. Women expect that little will be done, so most cases go unreported. When they are reported and taken to court only 10% of cases have the perpetrator charged for their crimes, which is a reason women won't come forward as they know little will come from it. Female soldiers have developed several techniques for avoiding sexual assault including, 1, relying on support networks buddy systems, 2, capitalizing on their status associated with rank, age, time spent in military, or prior deployment experience, and, 3, masking femininity through clothing to minimize violence exposure and to keep themselves and others safe during military service. Such strategies leave the burden of addressing the problem on potential victims. Conversely, in many units, soldiers pair off as buddies who watch out for each other 
In mostly male units, females buddy with males who then often becomes excessively protective, reducing the female's agency. A lawsuit seeks redress for military plaintiffs who claim to have been subjected to sexual assault. The Invisible War addresses this lawsuit and topic. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Effects of sexual assault. Sexual assault leads to many health problems for women in the military such as anxiety disorders, such as post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD, depression, substance abuse, binge eating, dissociation and memory impairment, suicidal and parasuicidal behavior, sexual dysfunction and dissatisfaction, poor self-esteem, and personality disorders, such as borderline personality disorder. It also takes a toll on their physical health and have reported having menstrual complications, headaches, back pain, gastrointestinal pain, all of these factors make it hard for women to stay in the military, in women it is the leading cause for early leave of the armed forces. Once leaving the military the women have a hard time reintegrating back into society and can end up homeless. It is so debilitating for women in the military because most of their perpetrates are people they work and live with, from peers to a supervisor and higher above. This close relationship creates a new type of trauma as the victim is forced to see them every day and creates an overall lack of trust in people. They more often fail to complete college, and generally earn incomes less than $25,000. Their work can involve frequent interactions with their attacker, and damages trust in the institution. Perpetrators are typically in a higher position have the job to protect the woman, increasing trauma. Updated military training focuses on bystander interventions and the role of consent in sexual activity, emphasizing the responsibility of male soldiers. Some female soldiers assume the classically male role of protector. This works to change women's responsibility for preventing rape and requires that male soldiers acknowledge their responsibility to engage with female soldiers in all activities. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Women on submarines. In 1985, the Royal Norwegian Navy became the first navy in the world to permit female personnel to serve in submarines. The first female submarine commander was Captain Solvay Cray aboard the first Cobbin class submarine on of September 1995. The Danish Navy allowed women on submarines in 1988, the Swedish Navy in 1989, followed by the Royal Australian Navy in 1998, Canada in 2000 and Spain. On April 29, 2010, the United States Navy authorized women to serve aboard submarines. Previously, objections such as the need for separate accommodation and facilities estimates that modifying submarines to accommodate women would cost $300,000 per bunk versus $4,000 per bunk on aircraft carriers had prevented the change. The Navy stated that larger SSGN and SSBN submarines had more available space and could accommodate female officers with little, no modification. Qualified female candidates with the desire to serve were available. Women then represented 15% of active duty sailors and were earning about half of all science and engineering bachelor's degrees. In May 2014, it was announced that three women had become the UK Royal Navy's first female submariners. On November 15, 2017, the first Argentinian female submarine officer Eliana Kravchek disappeared in the Atlantic Ocean after the Argentinian Navy lost contact with ERA San Juan submarine after a reported failure in the electric system. As one of the 44 crew members lost at sea, Kravchek was honored by the country's Jewish community as La Reina de las Mares. On International Women's Day in 2018, on July 4, 2017, after two years of training, four female officers boarded a French SSBN for France's first 70-day mixed-gender patrol. The next generation of French submarines are designed to welcome women. Women are expected to join submarine crews in the Royal Netherlands Navy in 2019, with the addition of shower doors and changing room curtains. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Academic studies. A 2008 study found that female cadets saw military training as an opportunity to be strong, assertive and skillful," and saw such training as an escape from some of the negative aspects of traditional femininity. The female cadets also believed that the ROTC program was gender-blind and gender-neutral. The study claims that female cadets 
were hyper vigilant about their status as women performing tasks traditionally seen as men's work and often felt that they had to constantly prove they were capable. The study quoted one female cadet. In the Navy the joke is that a woman in the Navy is either a bitch, a slut or a lesbian, and none of them are good categories to fall into, and if you are stern with your people then you are a bitch, but if you're a guy and stern people are like, wow, I respect him for being a good leader." 84% of cadets said they did not want a military career as it would interfere with marriage and raising children. A 2009 study examined the attitudes of West Point cadets, Reserve Officer Training Corps (ROTC) cadets, and non-military affiliated students from civilian colleges toward a variety of military roles. Cadets were less approving of assigning women to certain military jobs than others. Apart from negative stigmas surrounding women in military training, their role in academics throughout various vocational training schools has increased throughout the years. Statistics from the Women's Memorial taken in 2011 show that the traditionally minute portion of the military that included women has risen to approximately 15% on active duty, 20% serving in reserve or guard components, and 16% currently receiving officer training. These statistics also show that approximately 90% of all military occupational specialties are now available to women. Some of which include combat arms specialties which have traditionally excluded women from participation. Women's inclusion in combat arms specialties has been a long-fought battle, of which women have obtained the right to participate in such occupational specialties such as infantry, and even advanced schools such as Army Ranger School. As of April 9, 2018, 12 women have successfully completed the rigorous Army Ranger Training School. According to the Army Times, the first two women to graduate from Army Ranger School were capped. Kristen Gryest and First Lieutenant Shea Hever. This is a huge milestone for women in the military, and as a result of this we have seen our first women in a commanding officer position over a company in the Army's prestigious 82nd Airborne Division, which still serves as an infantry company. According to statistics presented by the Council on Foreign Relations, there has been a significant increase in the percentage of women in the military, from 2% to 16 to 18% today. <laughs> <laughs> Women's History Month Topic. Further reading Topic Bibliography Fasting, Carey and Tron Svela Sand eds. 2010. Gender and Military Issues, a Categorized Research Bibliography, Moving Soldiers, Soldaten i Bevegels 01, 2010. ISSN 1891-8751. 1. Sand, Tron Svela and Kerry Fasting eds. 2012, Gender and Military Issues in the Scandinavian Countries, a Categorized Research Bibliography, Moving Soldiers, Soldaten i Bevegels 01, 2012. ISSN 1891-8751. 2. Brownson, Connie 2014. Rejecting Patriarchy for Equivalence in the U.S. Military A Response to Anthony King's Women Warriors, Female Accession to Ground Combat. Armed Forces and Society. 44, 765-788. History Cook, Bernard, ed. 2006. Women and War, Historical Encyclopedia from Antiquity to the Present. Elstein, Jean Bethke. Women and War, 1995. Elstein Jean, and Sheila Tobias, eds., Women, Militarism, and War 1990. Goldman, Nancy Loring ed., 1982. Female Soldiers Combatants or Noncombatants? Historical and Contemporary Perspectives. Goldstein, Joshua S. War and Gender, How Gender Shapes the War System and Vice Versa 2003, Psychology Perspective Hacker, Barton C. and Margaret Vining, eds. A Companion to Women's Military History 2012-625 pp. Articles by scholars covering a very wide range of topics. Hall, Richard H. Women on the Civil War Battlefront University Press of Kansas 2006. Lines, Lisa 2011. 
Milicianas, Women in Combat in the Spanish Civil War 1936 Plymouth, UK, Lexington Press. ISBN 978-0-7391-6492-1 Jones, David. Women Warriors, A History, Brassies, 1997 Pennington, Reina, 2003. Amazons to Fighter Pilots, A Biographical Dictionary of Military Women. Salmonson, Jessica Amanda, 1991. The Encyclopedia of Amazons, Women Warriors from Antiquity to the Modern Era. Paragon House. ISBN 978-1-55778-420-9. World War II Bittescombe, Perry, 2011. Into the Maelstrom, German Women in Combat, 1944-45, War and Society 2011, 30 No. 1 pp 61-89 Bidwell, Shelford. The Women's Royal Army Corps London, 1977 on Britain Campbell, Dan. Women at War with America, Private Lives in a Patriotic Era Harvard University Press, 1984, on WW2 Campbell, Dan. Servicewomen of World War II, Armed Forces and Society Win 1990 16-251-270, Statistical Study Based on Interviews Campbell, Dan. Women in Combat, The World War II Experience in the United States, Great Britain, Germany, and the Soviet Union Journal of Military History April 1993, 57-301-323, online edition in JSTOR Cottom, K. Jean Soviet Airwomen in Combat in World War II Manhattan, K.'s, Military Affairs, Aerospace Historian Publishing, 1983 DeGroote G.J. Whose Finger on the Trigger? Mixed Anti-Aircraft Batteries and the Female Combat Taboo, War in History, Vol. 4 No. 4, December 1997, pp. 434-453 Dombrowski, Nicole Ann. Women and War in the Twentieth Century, Enlisted with or Without Consent 1999, Domine, Jean-Francois, 2008. Les Femmes au Combat, L'Armée Féminine de la France Pendant la Seconde Guerre Mondiale Hageman, Karen, 2011. Mobilizing Women for War, The History, Historiography, and Memory of German Women's War Service in the Two World Wars. Journal of Military History. 75 3, 1055-1093. Harfield, Allen The Women's Auxiliary Corps India. Journal of the Society for Army Historical Research. 83 243-254. Krylova, Anna. 2010. Soviet Women in Combat, A History of Violence on the Eastern Front. Morton, Allison. Military or Civilians? The Curious Anomaly of the German Women's Auxiliary Services During the Second World War, 2012. ASIN B007 JUR408 Markwick, Roger D. 2008. A Sacred Duty, Red Army Women Veterans Remembering the Great Fatherland War, 1941-1945, Australian Journal of Politics and History, 2008, 54 No. 3 pp. 403-420. Maubach, Franka, Satjukau, Silk, 2009. Zwischen Emancipation und Trauma, Soldatinnen im Zweiten Weltkrieg Deutschland, Sojetunion, USA Historisch Zeitschrift, April 2009, Vol. 288 Issue 2, pp. 347-384 Mary, Lois K., 2010. Women Military Pilots of World War II, A History with Biographies of American, British, Russian and German Aviators. Pennington, Reina, 2007. Wings, Women and War, Soviet Airwomen in World War II Combat Pennington, Reina, 2010. Offensive Women, Women in Combat in the Red Army in the Second World War Journal of Military History, July 2010, Vol. 74 Issue 3, p. 775-820 Pearson, Ruth Roach, 1986. There's Still Women After All, The Second World War and Canadian Womanhood. McBride, Brenda, 1985. Quiet Heroines, Story of the Nurses of the Second World War, on British Sarnaki, Mary T. 1999. A History of the U.S. Army Nurse Corps Schwarzkopf, Uta, 2009. Combatant or Non-Combatant? The Ambiguous Status of Women in British Anti-Aircraft Batteries During the Second World War. War and Society, 28 105-131. 
doi 10.1179/0729247097930546422. Toman, Cynthia. 2007. An Officer and a Lady: Canadian Military Nursing and the Second World War. Treadwell, Matty E. 1954. United States Army in World War II, Special Studies, The Women's Army Corps, The Standard History, Part of the Army Green Series Online Free Williamson, Gordon, 2003. World War II German Women's Auxiliary Services. Topic Recent Campbell, Dan, 2012 Almost Integrated? American Servicewomen and Their International Sisters Since World War II in A Companion to Women's Military History Ed by Barton C. Hacker and Margaret Vining pp. 291-330 Carreras, Helena. Gender and the Military, Women in the Armed Forces of Western Democracies New York, Routledge, 2006 Carreras, Helena and Gerhard Kamel eds, Women in the Military and in Armed Conflict 2008 excerpt and text search Dandeker, Christopher, and Maddie Weschler Siegel. Gender Integration in Armed Forces, Recent Policy Developments in the United Kingdom Armed Forces and Society 23 No. 1 Fall 1996, 29-47. Ulriot, Irene. Women and the Military in Europe, Comparing Public Cultures New York, Palgrave Macmillan, 2009 Frampton, James Scott The Influence of Attitudes and Morale on the Performance of Active Duty United States Marine Corps Female Security Guards 2011 Frank, Nathaniel et al. eds. Gaze in Foreign Militaries 2010, A Global Primer Santa Barbara, CA, Palm Center, 2010 Garcia, Sarah, 1999. Military Women in the NATO Armed Forces. Minerva, Quarterly Report on Women and the Military. 17 33-82. Gill, Ritu, Febrero, Angela R. 2013. Experiences and Perceptions of Sexual Harassment in the Canadian Forces Combat Arms. Violence Against Women. 19 269-287. Doi 10.1177 1 quadrillion 77 trillion 801 billion 213 million 478,140. PMID 23,443,902. Goldman, Nancy. The Changing Role of Women in the Armed Forces, American Journal of Sociology 1973-78 4, 892-911. ISSN 0002-9602 Online in JSTOR Herbert, Melissa S. Camouflage Isn't Only for Combat, Gender, Sexuality, and Women in the Military New York U Press, 1998 Home, Jean M. 1993. Women in the Military, An Unfinished Revolution, Women from the United States Lemon, Gail Zemeck. Ashley's War, The Untold Story of a Team of Women Soldiers on the Special Ops Battlefield HarperCollins, 2015 American Women Skein, Rosemary. Women at War, Gender Issues of Americans in Combat. McFarland, 1999. United States Presidential Commission on the Assignment of Women. 1993 Report on the Presidential Commission on the Assignment of Women. Topic. Middle East. Homestead, Kirsten. Band of Sisters, American Women at War in Iraq 2007 excerpt and text search Homestead, Kirsten. The Girls Come Marching Home. Wise, James E. and Scott Barron. Women at War, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Other Conflicts 2006. Topic Social Science Studies Archer, Emerald M. 2013. The Power of Gendered Stereotypes in the U.S. Marine Corps. Armed Forces and Society. 39 to 359 to 391.00975327 extension 12446924. Booth, Bradford, 2003. Contextual effects of military presence on women's earnings. Armed Forces and Society, 30 to 25 minus 51. Doi 10.1177/0095327 extension 0303000102. Cooney et al. 2003. Racial differences in the impact of military service on the socioeconomic status of women veterans. Armed Forces and Society 30 to 53-85.
doi 10.1177/0095327x0303000103.cs1 103 one maint explicit use of et al link dar yicheskel kimi shal 2004 youth in the military gendered experiences in the conscript service in the israeli army armed forces and society 33 433 to 459 doi 101177 extension 0403000306. Iskra, Darlene 2007. Attitudes toward expanding roles for Navy women at sea, results of a content analysis. Armed Forces and Society. 33 to 223 doi 10.1177-0095327 extension 0628783. Mitchell, Brian, 1998. Women in the Military, Flirting with Disaster. Washington, D.C., Regnery Publishing. XVII, 390 ISBN 0-89526-376-9 Moore, Brenda, 1991. African American Women in the U.S. Military. Armed Forces and Society, 17 3, 363-384. Doi 101177 extension 910170303 Topic Websites Green Berets BBC News Online on May 31, 2002 Long Hard Struggle for Green Beret Retrieved on March 12, 2007 BBC News Online on May 31, 2002, Superwoman Pips Green Beret Test Retrieved on March 12, 2007 Joan of Arc Joan of Arc Archive Retrieved on March 12, 2007 Made of Heaven Extensive Site About Joan of Arc, Retrieved on March 12, 2007 Women Veterans The Betty H. Carter Women Veterans Historical Project Located in the Special Collections and University Archives Department at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro Textiles and Artifacts from Women in World War I Located in the Special Collections and University Archives Department at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro Miscellaneous Official Women in the U.S. Army History Page Retrieved on June 23, 2016 Blitzkriegbaby.de Site for Women in the Military Retrieved on March 12, 2007 Women in the Military, a Selected Bibliography, Jacqueline S. Bay, 2005, retrieved on March 12, 2007 Iraqi Bloggers Central, Oldest American Servicewoman Killed in Combat retrieved on March 12, 2007 Militarywoman.org Militarywoman retrieved on March 12, 2007 Post-Gazette.com retrieved on March 12, 2007 Womansnews.org retrieved on March 12, 2007 The History of a Hello Girl retrieved on July 17, 2007 When Janie Comes Marching Home Multimedia Project on Women Serving in Iraq and Afghanistan in the Virginia Quarterly Review Enlisted Women in Submarines EWIS U.S. Navy Topic. External links Media related to women in the military at Wikimedia Commons